Hello friends, this video on respiration in organisms part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are introduction, types of respiration, aerobic and anaerobic respiration, breathing, breathing in cockroach, breathing in earthworm, breathing in aquatic animals and respiration in plants. Now when, what are we going to discuss in respiration? So the term looks big but we will see that it is something which is a part of our life which happens which, which we do all the time 24 bar 7. So let's start from here. We all eat food. Why do we eat food? Because we feel hungry. But why do we feel hungry? Why do we need that food? Because our moms often tell us that eat good food, it will give you energy. So food is actually related to energy. So this food which you eat, many of us eat uh, rice, some of us eat chapati, some eat burgers, some eat pizza. So all these food items, what do you do? You just eat them, put it inside your mouth, chew it properly, swallow it, you have, you have properly digested it. What after that? How is that food going to give you energy? So that food somehow is going to get converted into energy and this energy will actually enable you to do a lot of activities. We are able to walk, we are able to run, we are able to study, we are able to do so many things because we have energy. Now sometimes have you observed that if you don't eat for quite a long time, maybe if you are on a fast, for the entire day, you did not have your breakfast, you did not have your lunch. So by the time it is almost evening, you tend to feel very weak. You feel less energetic. Why? Because you have not eaten any food. So there is no energy inside your body. Right? Now, whatever food we eat, this food gets inside our mouth and then it finally enters into the stomach, then in the intestine and in during these uh times the digestion of food happens that is the food is broken down into its simplest form and then it is absorbed by the body and then this food is what happens so this food is then utilized to provide energy and then that energy is actually given to all the cells of the body so what do we want we want oxygen to get this food converted into energy. So what do we need? We need oxygen because these simplest form of food which is absorbed by different cells of our body. So that food needs to be converted into energy because that food directly that's even that simplest form of food which is normally glucose this cannot directly give us energy. So that conversion what is that conversion? So that conversion is where respiration comes into picture. So you see respiration and digestion, they are very closely linked to each other. So digestion is all about breaking the complex food items into simpler forms so that the simplest forms can be absorbed by the different cells of the body. And respiration is all about conversion of that simplest form or utilizing that simplest form of food to produce energy. So that simplest form of food which is normally say glucose, let us say for example we are considering the simplest form of carbohydrate which is glucose. So this glucose will be oxidized to produce energy and this process is called respiration. So here we are going to discuss a lot of things about respiration. So mostly we will look at how exactly we get oxygen which is needed to convert this uh, food into energy. So let us see how what, what interesting stuffs do we have here. Now what really happens is we eat food Digestion of food happens, that is the food passes through the food pipe, through the stomach, through the intestine. It is broken down into the simplest forms by various digestive juices and enzymes. And then it is absorbed because the simplest form of food can be easily absorbed by the cells of our body. And then it is also transported to other parts of the body, to other cells of the body through blood. So that's how the simplest form of food is able to reach all cells of our body. 
then what happens is the oxidation of food to provide energy so that simplest form of food which is which we assume to be glucose which is an example of a simple carbohydrate so glucose is oxidized in presence of oxygen to produce energy and this process is called cellular respiration why cellular because this process takes place inside each and every cell of our body because our body is made up of many cells right cells are like small units they are small repeating units which make up our body it is like uh, let me give you an example let us think of a house so if you think of a house what is this house made up of the house is made up of bricks so a lot of bricks put together actually builds this house so these bricks are like the cells and this house is like the body the entire organism so the entire organism is made up of many small small cells which are all repeating structures and they have together formed that organism so this process of respiration will take place inside each and every cell because inside each cell a lot of processes are taking place so every cell needs energy so that energy comes from respiration so you see this is where respiration fits in so first you should know what is respiration what is it related to only then we will learn how exactly it happens what are the various parts of our body which are involved in respiration and all that complex stuff so now respiration we has to take place now for this respiration what do we need we need oxygen because i said that the food needs to be oxidized so for this we need oxygen so oxygen has to be taken in so some by some or the other method oxygen needs to enter inside your body only then oxygen will be available to the cells of our body to carry out oxidation so only then respiration will happen so oxygen has to be taken inside our body by some means and also during this process when this entire chemical process takes place when the food gets oxidized a lot of energy is of course produced along with that carbon dioxide gas is also produced so this carbon dioxide gas what will you do by accumulating so much of carbon dioxide inside your body so the carbon dioxide which is being produced as a product of respiration that needs to be released out of our body so basically during respiration we need to ensure that by some method oxygen needs to enter our body and carbon di dioxide needs to be released out of our body so this is the overall picture of respiration so i hope that you got an idea about what are we going to discuss in this lesson yes thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again